You may know a lot about the city you live in, about the plants and animals around you, but what do you know about what you can't see, about life too small to catch with the naked eye? Only a few steps away from you, there are unknown territories waiting to be explored. Today, I will take you on a journey inside the micro world. I'm a photographer, and I make portraits of microorganisms. My work is being used in art exhibitions as well as for science education, and I help create the first museum about microbes in Amsterdam. Now, where shall we start our, our journey? What do we need? First of all, a microscope, and I happen to have one with me. This is the microscope Anthony van Leeuwenhoek used. With this, he discovered the microworld in water from a lake. It's the birth of microbiology. And by pure coincidence, I happen to live at the exact spot where van Leeuwenhoek did his great discovery. The first microorganisms he described, he found, he described as green coils. Regular green tendrils, that's the exact word, regular coils about the thickness of a human hair made out of little balls. It's been a bit of a mystery what they were, but recently I discovered their identity. They are cyanobacteria. That's when I learned you don't have to be a scientist to make discoveries. <laughs> and did you know that Walt Disney also discovered the cyanobacteria? Let's dive into the micro world and find out more. We are in the lake now with cyanobacteria. These organisms were the first to use light as an energy source. Long before the plants evolved, the cyanobacteria created the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. They are very important to us. Without them, we wouldn't be there. Nowadays, there are many other organisms that feed on sunlight. We call them algae. The best architects in the microworld are algae too, the diatoms. You may think that humans are good at architecture. The diatoms mastered it millions of years before us. And they built their houses of glass. Let's travel further. In case you hadn't noticed, many algae move. They use beating hairs to swim towards the sunlight or to avoid predators. Because life is hard when you're only one twentieth of a millimeter. <laughs> so many organisms, many algae, form colonies to grow bigger and bigger. Volvox can grow to the size of one millimeter. Algae are great, but my favorite microorganisms are the ciliates. What would a microsafari be without the giraffe of the microworld, Lacrimaria olor? It can stretch its body to the extreme. So watch out in the front rows, it's a predator. <laughs> We're now at the bottom of the lake where Paramecia graze on bacteria. What they don't realize is that lurking there is a fearsome hunter, the amoeba. Amoebas are not just simple blobs. Yes, this one actually grabs the paramecium. Compared to us, they may look simple, but isn't it much more admirable how they cope? We humans need a huge, complicated body made out of trillions of cells to eat a simple sandwich. Amoebas don't need all that. One cell, no brain, still they're capable of very surprising behavior. The miniature jungle underwater is a dangerous place when you are a campanella and your arch enemy, Trachelius, is approaching you. You don't need fangs or claws when you have a big mouth. It's actually not a true mouth. Trachelius engulfs its prey and shoots some poisonous darts into its victim to paralyze it. Ciliates are amongst the most advanced microorganisms. Every safari needs scavengers. Two Ophioglinas are feasting inside the remains of a dead organism. Their extreme flexibility helps them to reach even the narrowest parts. 
And the most surprising thing is, yeah, that number two will follow its friend almost immediately. Look, I wouldn't call this consciousness, but it's clever for a single cell. There are also multicellular true animals of microscopic scale, the rotifers. They invented the wheel. No, they didn't. <laughs> it's it's the, the hairs they use to sweep in food particles. But one group of rotifers is special. They have discarded the males. There are no... There are only females. Yes, it's possible. Males are so overrated, we don't really need them. <laughs> so ladies, next time a man tells you what to do, remind him of the rotifers. <laughs> are you already feeling at home in the micro world? <laughs> Some of these micro animals can even have a relaxing effect on you. <laughs> don't you want to have this water flea as a pet? The mi micro dressage is very hard. Ah, you can even witness the birth of a water flea. Look. Ah, isn't that amazing? The micro world is full of amazing characters. Okay, some are scary. <laughs> okay. We are now at the edge between water and land. What happens if the water dries up? The water bear can form escape capsules that can withstand extreme conditions. Heat, cold, radiation, it can even be shot into the vacuum of outer space. It can last for several decades like this. Impressive, but the ultimate survivors are the bacteria. Their spores can survive for millions of years. Eventually, bacteria are the basis of life. It all starts and ends with the bacteria. We humans are just there as a nice ornamentation. We're back. Where to go next? How about soil life? Just press the heel of your shoe in a petri dish and you'll get a glimpse of what lives underneath our feet. We know so much about the moons and the planets around us, but what do we know about the soil we stand on? Or those aliens in the lake? There's still so much to discover just around the corner not just for scientists, but also for adventurers with a microscope. So remember, you don't have to be a scientist to make discoveries. Even a simple photographer like me can make groundbreaking scientific discoveries. I end with my own contribution to science, my latest study about the musical capabilities of the water flea. <laughs>